let's start then with the omnibuses and we'll do trains and planes a bit later on. Now, you're announcing a bit where a billion pounds of taxpayers' cash is going in subsidy, but you're taking away the £2 cap on bus fares for passengers. Do you admit just it's logical that's going to make it more expensive for people to get around? Well, the £2 fare cap was due to finish on the 31st of December. That was the funding settlement I inherited and the budget settlement that was agreed by the previous government. So we stepped in uh, to protect the cap at £3, which means that for rural routes in particular, where the bus fares could have leapt back up to £13 or £14 in some instances, we're keeping it at much lower at £3. But crucially, for fares... Right, but that's still a 50% increase. And, like, you can make the case and say, well, look, we have to prioritise our spending. We need to prioritise what we're spending money on. We can't just subsidise buses forever, etc. Right? You could make that line specifically. The problem, of course, is that that's total nonsense because the total value of all bus fares combined in the UK last year was less than £2 billion. I mean, you say you could make the argument you can't subsidise buses forever, to which I would say, yes, you can. True. You literally can. You could literally 100% subsidise it. You could say, we bring it into ownership and every single mother can use a bus as much as they like. None of this is considered by our journalist class for just the same reason as they got mad at Jeremy Corbyn for talking about buses at Prime Minister's Question, which affects large, huge members of the population. Well, of course, journalists don't get the bus. They, they say, well, you should have been talking about Brexit or this thing that's going on at Westminster. Well, no, actually, buses are very important to people. I mean, Lisa Nandy brought this up in the 2020 leadership campaign. As much as I hate her, you know, she was right. Most people have their own material concerns to look at. And a policy such as we are making buses more expensive will cut through in a way that certain different nebulous changes to tax policy might not. So it's not only bad for the climate and for people's pockets, it's also just bad politically as well. As um, in cities where previously the fare might have been even less than £2, we're setting it so that operators can't raise fares in uh, more than in line with inflation. So we wouldn't expect all fares to rise to £3. That is a maximum amount. Yeah, but they will. And you know they will. It's the same when they increase the fucking cap for uh, tuition fees. Well, we don't expect that every course will be. Yeah, they will. Of course they fucking will. What's really important, though, about this settlement today is that we're improving reliability and frequency of services. You know, for lots of rural areas, they don't have a bus at all, or they don't have one that turns up before 9am or after 5pm, this unprecedented level of funding, particularly into rural areas, will vastly improve services, their reliability and frequency. Which is another reason we should nationalise, so that people who live in these areas are guaranteed bus service. Because private companies don't want to do it, because it's not very financially advantageous for them. Basic rule of thumb should be, if you can't opt out of using it, it shouldn't be run for a profit. And you can't opt out of travel. You do have to travel. You can't opt out of healthcare. You need healthcare. You can't opt out of water. You need water. These sorts of things. They shouldn't be run for a profit. They should be in national hands, uh, making money for the nation. Inelastic demand. Indeed. But protecting the cap, as you put it, means increasing fares for lots of people. And one of our viewers has been in touch. Kay carter -Mead says her sister-in-law is a cleaner and a dinner lady. She has to take three buses to get to work. It's going to cost her, therefore, an extra £15 a week just to get to work. Where's she meant to find the money on? Well, I think for people that rely on those kind of numbers of buses, they'd be unlikely to catch three single fares. I think it'd be much more economical to buy a kind of weekly card in lots of instances. Okay, this is a real life example. Yeah. One of our viewers says in their family, somebody's going to have to find an extra £15 a week and that's money they don't have. So what are they meant to do? Well, if we hadn't taken action, the fair cap would have, uh, the fair cap would have been lifted entirely. So we've stepped in. Right, and you could have kept it in place completely. Why have you chosen to go, well, actually, they can pay £3, fuck them. Oh, well, but, uh, and it's nothing, it's worth a, like, a tiny, tiny amount extra to put yeah. the cap at £2 rather than 3 And Barry Brown points out exactly in chat, in the this difference of a pound, which would makes real difference to people on the ground, but is very, it, 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 it complete, it's infinitesimal in terms of budget spending for the government, right? But they want to look sensible. There's the vibe of being sensible and not just spending on things because they think it would be good for optics. They want to have the optics of looking sensible rather than looking generous. And Bill Barry Brown has described it that it sums up the miserablest pennywise pound foolish spreadsheet dad value of nothing idiocy of the Labour Party and all of its current supporters. And I couldn't agree more. 
Yeah, that's a that's a great description. With 150 million pounds to protect that level of fair, up for people, but they so shouldn't go up. So it, depending money. on where depending on where this lady lives, it shouldn't go up to three pounds. If she's uh, relying on, on bus services, particularly in urban areas, as I say, they shouldn't be allowed to uh, increase more than inflation. So it shouldn't go up and that much. Shouldn't, but what are you going to do if it does? And even then, right, if it's not going up to £3, then it would cost the state even less to subsidise the cap down to £2. Yeah. If it's going up to £2.60 or whatever, then that's that's very, very small amounts. That's like peanuts in terms of the overall government budget. And again, only somebody who is penny pinching to the nth degree would think that this was worth it, especially at the cost of the like gigantic amounts of political capital of all of the people who otherwise would be completely disengaged from politics, right? Luke Trill, the head of More in Common, which is a very kind of well-founded pollster that I have a lot of respect for, was talking about how people in focus groups say, well, my mum talks about how good the £2 fair cap was and she never talks about politics but she was going on to me apropos of nothing about how good this two pound bus fair cap was right this is something that has a real impact on people's life and really cuts through and they're incinerating incinerating political capital for absolutely nothing absolutely nothing whatsoever to save not point not 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 one percent or whatever it is of the government's overall budget when they could have just like put a point extra of ca on capital gains tax at the last budget and completely avoided all of this but we are keeping keeping fares at a level that will protect those services in rural areas and crucially improving the reliability and frequency so it means more people can get the bus. It's not an option for too many people mm. and too many towns and villages are completely cut off from public and transport at the moment. And you are clearly trying to sort of reset this and put a yeah. focus on bus services that, you know, more than three million people rely on. But there's an important question here. You say you're protecting the cap at three pounds for now. What happens at the end of 2025? I mean, can you tell people today that the fares are going to be held at that level for good? Well, the fare cap is funded until the end of 2025, so and we'll use this period to design what comes next. But for the the funding settlement that we've been we've agreed with the Treasury is to protect the fare cap until the end of 2025. So we'll design what comes after that. But it crucially, could go this up is, at the end of 2025. Well, it's, yeah, it's only funded until the end of 2025. Okay. Yay! Two hundred pound bus fares in twenty twenty six. I mean, again, she was talking about this. She was asked this specifically by Trevor Phillips uh, on today's Sunday morning program, and she said that they wanted to design a more targeted version of doing this, like targeted at young people. So um, the plans that we inherited would have ended the cap completely on the thirty first of December. We've stepped in with funding to protect it at three pounds until the thirty first of December next year, and in that period will look to establish more targeted approaches. We've, uh, through evaluation of the £2 cap, uh, found that the, the best approach is to target it at young people. So we want to look at ways in order to ensure more targeted ways, just like we do with the, um, with the concessionary fare for older people. We think we can develop more targeted ways that will better encourage people onto buses. Oh, that's and I'm like, no, how about we stop means testing? How about you know, we actually make the case for universalism after 15 bloody years? of constant like means testing fetishism of trying to strip everything good away so that nobody could potentially benefit from it who doesn't explicitly need it 100% gets it or, 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 or won't be getting it anymore like all this kind of fine-tuned means testing in case you know we piss off somebody who thinks that a benefit is being given out undeservedly in their high-minded opinion it's a hiding to nothing because all we'll do is strip everything away so it's all means test it's all unnecessary bureaucracy trying to hyper target every benefit when it would be cheaper more efficient and fewer people would go slipping through the net if we just made these things universal and we could make the case for ending for ending this period of continued means test but nope they've just turned into george osborne and ian duncan smith and they're doing it again and again and again yeah, exactly. or more this and more is, different things this is not the change that people wanted this is not the change that people voted for but there we go it doesn't matter because the actual people that this is targeted at is uh, the editor of the daily mail and the sun